Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and I've been putting the paper mache clay on my basset hound. I'm being a little careful holding him right now because some of it's still wet. I still have a lot left to do. He's only got wrinkles on one front leg right now. I've got to fix that. But I wanted to hurry up and get this video out. Uh, it, it's taking me longer than I had expected and a lot of people are telling me to hurry up. So I thought I'd go ahead and do the video at least and then finish the paper mache clay uh, later this week. If you haven't seen all of the Basset Hound videos yet, you can find them all on my YouTube channel. Just look for the Basset Hound playlist or go to ultimatepapermache.com slash Basset Hound and that's where you'll also find the, the free pattern if you'd like to use the pattern that I did. Now make sure that you watch this whole video because there's a couple of really exciting things that I'm going to show you about. One of them is a tool that our friend Jim told me about a couple of months ago. Uh, I got an email from him. I immediately ordered one of these, but this is the first time I've actually had a chance to use it and it's really cool. I'm going to tell you about that just a little bit later. We also got some really great ideas on how to do the wrinkles. Those are all on the Basset Hound page on my website. I wasn't able to use most of them because I was in such a hurry to get this video out. I thought that if I did a whole lot more experiments it was really going to slow things down way too much. But do check those out. It, like I said it's on the ultimatepapermache.com slash basset hound. Just keep uh, scrolling down to the bottom where the comments are. But also um, while we were having that conversation our friend Angie told us about a really cool thing that she does with all of her sculptures and that is that she alters the paper mache clay recipe just a little bit when she's putting the final layers on. But now I'm going to show you how I got to this point. The last time you saw him he was just aluminum foil. I did have to make some changes. I told you I was going to uh, because the eyes ended up not being quite in the right place. But then I went ahead and started adding the paper mache clay. I only used one third of a cup of the white flour in my paper mache clay recipe this time because I wanted to be able to smooth it on in a really, really thin layer. And I was able to use a very flexible silicone spatula to put it on over the bigger portions, like on his back and, and up towards the top of his head. That that was really handy for making it fairly smooth. It didn't work very good in all the places that were really hard to reach and where I really really needed something to help make it smoother uh, the the spatula just wouldn't wouldn't reach it so I did use a knife to apply the the paper mache for everywhere else I also forgot somehow or another that it's easier to put paper strips and paste around sharp edges like like the edges of ears because I forgot and I was in a hurry, I tried putting the paper mache clay over those edges. It really wasn't working so I let whatever was on there already to get dry. Then went back with some wood glue and some uh, brown paper and added the paper mache strips and paste over those edges. Usually when I'm using paper strips and paste over aluminum foil I put some masking tape on first because regular paste and I don't think even Elmer's glue will stick to aluminum foil. Most things won't. Paper mache clay does and it turns out that wood glue does if you put enough on. You really have to glob it on the back of your piece though. If you try to be stingy with the wood glue that that just totally didn't work. It wouldn't stick. But I did get it on there, let that dry and that made a huge difference. So um, I'll, I'll have to do just a little bit of smoothing off to get the edges the, the way I need them to be. But the paper strips and paste are so much better around sharp edges. So if you're doing this, um, try to remember that before you get started with the paper mache clay. Uh, I forgot. Okay, I did use Eileen's idea of making the larger wrinkles, like the ones up on his front, on his chest. Uh, those were just made with the aluminum foil which I already had out so that was a really easy thing to do. But I also tried using the aluminum foil for some of the smaller wrinkles uh, around the top of his leg and it didn't work as well not because there was anything wrong with the aluminum foil. It should have worked but I just wasn't careful enough. I, I didn't smooth it out enough and I didn't um, I just didn't shape the those particular wrinkles the way I should have. 
I didn't actually realize that until after the paper mache clay was on there and it was dry and I'm thinking, ick, that, that really didn't work. So I got out my hammer. This thing, <laughs> I just absolutely love this tool. I got it with a flat pack shelving unit that I bought off of Amazon.com. I don't have many good things to say about the shelving unit, <laughs> unfortunately, but this hammer is really cool. It's got a, a rubber tip on one end and a, a plastic tip on the other end. It looks like one of them is coming loose. And I just go, I just went ahead and start smashing that paper mache clay and the aluminum foil underneath it and just made it as flat as I could. There were some shards of paper mache clay that really did need to be pulled off. And so I did that first, but then I went ahead and added those wrinkles back in using the paper mache clay itself. Since that worked reasonably well, I went ahead and used the paper mache clay for all of the other wrinkles. I also had to make some uh, changes to his toes. You probably noticed already that when I was making his feet, I didn't make his toes long enough. My dog is a half Lhasa Apso um, designer mutt. So he has so much hair on his feet that you can't see his toes. And so I didn't have a, a model right here in the house. And I did look at photographs, but I just didn't get the toes right. They weren't long enough. So I went to the trouble of adding 16 new toes. Didn't want to. I also didn't really want to add the toenails. But I decided that since I was making the toes longer anyway, I would go ahead and cut some cardboard, some just cereal box cardboard, uh, add toenails to it, just use it as just little tiny pieces of patterns, uh, covered those with aluminum foil and then uh, stuck them on the end of the toes. I had to add more aluminum foil then to, to make everything even up. And I'll continue to do some more modeling with the paper mache clay to get everything smoothed out. I think they look a lot better. They're still not perfect, of course, but they come a lot closer than they did. So I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm going to leave them the way they are. Once the paper mache clay was added to those feet and I let that dry enough so that I could uh, work with it without sticking my finger in wet paper mache clay, I added the wrinkles down around the bottom of his legs. It's kind of like, like he's wearing socks that are too big for him and they just kind of slump down there. So let's get to that really cool tool. This is this is fun. This is called a Stanley Sureform Shaver. Our friend Jim told me about it. He sent, like I said, he he sent that uh, email in. Gosh, it was two months ago, and I went out and bought one of these right away. This is the first time I've gotten a chance to try it. When I asked Jim if it was okay if I shared this idea with you, he said, "Sure, just make sure that you tell people to wear gloves because it's really sharp and you can hurt yourself." So I naturally forgot to put the gloves on and I'm wearing a band-aid because of it. I haven't used this on all of it yet, but I did find some bumps that I could uh, scrape off for the video and it worked really, really well. In fact, it was it was working so well, it was kind of fun. So I, I kind of wanted to skip the video and just go ahead and finish the the basset hound but i made myself stop so he's got a lot more work to do with this but it worked really really good i did have to change the the blade here when when you get it or at least when i did um it only cut when you push and that's not the way i work i wanted it to go the other way but it's really easy to take this thing off and just turn it around. Paper seems to dull blades really fast and this has got paper in it obviously so you might need to get some uh, additional blades but they they sell those too. Um, I got this off of Amazon but they probably have exactly the same thing at your local hardware store. It's called a Sureform Shaver. Works really good. Thank you Jim for the the tip. I really appreciate it. Now the other idea that came from Angie Johnson out on uh, the Basset Hound page, we, she's the one who told us that we could uh, alter the paper mache clay enough so that we could brush it on for the last couple of layers. She didn't give us an exact recipe, she just said add more drywall joint compound and more glue, uh, which I did. I put a couple of globs of paper mache clay in there, I put a glob of the uh, drywall joint compound and a glob of glue. Then I actually added more later because it seems to, when it's thinner, it's a lot easier to, to brush on. She also says that she mixes it up in different 
thicknesses so that she can use it in different places for different things. Um, I brushed it on first with a, a chip brush just to get some material on there quickly and then I used a softer artist brush to smooth it out and it really does work. It's going to leave the texture of the paper. It's going to still have um, that organic look to it. So it is not going to be as smooth as it would be if you used that final layer of uh, silky smooth air dry clay like a lot of people do. But if you don't mind the, uh, the organic papery texture, then this is a really cool thing to try. In a way, this is basically the do-it-yourself gesso recipe that's been out on my website for a really long time. That's just glue and drywall joint compound. Again, no exact recipe. But that does crack sometimes. It will make a smoother surface, but sometimes it'll crack because there's no paper reinforcing it. And I haven't actually had that problem, but a lot of people have written me emails or put comments on my site say, hey, this I, I, I tried it and it cracked. I think it's because it isn't reinforced with the paper. It also doesn't come out as smooth as just using the drywall joint compound smoothed onto the, the piece with a, uh, a soft spatula. I made a whole video about that because that really does work well to, if you're making it really, really smooth. But for something like this guy with with so many dips and, and wrinkles and, and creases and that would be really, really hard to do. You get it on there, okay, but then getting it, uh, smoothing it off afterwards, that would be really hard. So the brush on, I think, is really, really good idea. If you do try it, please let us know. Put comments down below and let us know what you think. Or if you thought up something totally different that works even better, please let us know. In fact, I'm going to start doing some experiments with the whole idea of a brush on paper mache clay because I'm really excited about it. We received a guest post years ago by a professional mask maker, Robert uh, McVeigh, um, and he had an idea for a, a final coating that I never tried before because at the time that he wrote his guest post, I didn't have the materials. I do, just by coincidence, I have them now and I'm gonna try his idea mixed in with Angie's idea and we're gonna do some experiments coming forward. So uh, be sure to watch for those. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, be sure and do um, and click the bell thingy so you get notified when new videos come out. So now what I'm going to do is finish up his wrinkles finish smoothing him off. I might do a one or two or even more layers of Angie's brush on paper mache clay. Just really liking that stuff. I'm going to use the tool, uh, the Stanley Shaper tool, to um, make him as smooth as possible before that goes on. Then we're going to paint him. <laughs> He's so close to being done. If you want to make a basset hound, go ahead and download the free pattern. It's at ultimatepapermache.com slash basset hound. That's all one word. And then go make something and come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.